Hi, everyone. My name is Judy Lawrence. I come from the city of Philadelphia, which most of you know is the city of brotherly love. And I love being here and being able to teach you how you might want to enhance your notary business by becoming an apostille agent, especially with what's going on in the world. Everyone is looking for new opportunities. And personally, I think this is a great one. So let me tell you a little bit about me first. I was a legal secretary for many years, and I basically got laid off when the, when the layoffs were occurring about six or seven years ago. I had no life plan. I didn't know what to do. And then one fine day, I needed a notary. I called someone, and they came to my house, and I paid them. And when that girl walked out, a light bulb went off in my head. And I said, if I just paid her, why can't somebody be paying me? And so that was the beginning. This is six years later. I created a company called Center City Notary, which is a 24-hour-a-day notary company. And it's a busy place and a happy place, or at least it will be when the pandemic is over. And more recently, I created the Lawrence Institute for Notaries. And that's a website you should check out. It has some really interesting courses, including how to become an apostille agent. I am proud to say that I am not only a member, but an ambassador to the National Notary Association. And they're the very, very best. And if you're not a member and you can be, I suggest you should be because they just take care of everything and it's a great organization. So now that we know each other, I am going to begin to tell you about apostilles. And let me tell you that if you've never heard the word, neither has anyone else. When you do this for a living, you're, you get used to picking up your phone and somebody saying to you, uh, I have to get a document to China, I don't know, but it sounds like an ah something. And then you say apostille. Yes, that's right. That's what it is. Because it's not a household word and people are unfamiliar with it until the time comes when they actually need it. So it's a French word, by the way. It means certification. And it's the name of a specialized certificate, which is issued by the U.S. Secretary of State to be used in a foreign country. That foreign country, you're going to hear me refer to this time and time again, is the country of destination. So make it easy for yourself. Where's the document going? It's going to the country of destination. That makes life really simple. You're going to have the state of origination, which we'll get to, and the country of destination. So where did the document come from? Where did it originate? And where's it going? This is, I like to call this a learn on the go business. You will learn things as you go along. And it's, in my opinion, very interesting. I like to tell people sometimes that because I do it a lot and I say, you know, today I traveled to like six countries and I never left the office. So it's kind of a cool thing to do. And so I want to read you the definition of an apostle from the Maryland Secretary of State website, because in all my research, I have not found a better description so I'm going to read this to you. Apostilles do not certify the content of the document to which they relate. They do not grant authority and do not give additional weight to the contact of the document. An apostille may never be used for the recognition of a document in the country where the document, where the document was issued. So, so let's think about this for a minute. What do we do as notaries? We don't certify the content of a document. We don't grant any authority. We can't say, oh, here's the power of attorney and now you can use it. We don't give any recognition. We are there to authenticate the person's signature. That is what you are going to do. Now, I, in my own mind, I like to think of myself and hopefully all of you as the apostille agent or the coordinator. So you're going to learn the processes of the different states. Now, in all honesty, you're not going to learn the processes of 52 states overnight. It's not going to happen, and you shouldn't have to. But you're going to learn, the first thing you're going to learn is the processes of your own state, because in the beginning, 
that's where I think the majority of your work will come from. And there's another process besides an apostille, which is legalization. So keep that to the side because we're going to go through that. And the last point I wanted to make is that although it's not mandatory, it is definitely beneficial that you be a notary to do this business. And I'm going to get into why as we move down the line. Now, you're going to see that I picked out an Arizona apostille because we were supposed to be in Scottsdale, Arizona this week. And I thought it would be nice to show them what their own state looks like. And if I had to show you what every state looks like, I would have to show you 52 pages because they're all different. Every state is different. Pennsylvania has a big uh, gold seal. New York has three prongs. Everybody's different. As you move along and as you learn this business, you'll see every state does it their own way. The next thing is, you know what it is now, and you know that you're going to be the coordinator, and you're going to find out you know what it is. So where do you get it? You will get an apostille from the Secretary of State for the state where the document originated. You're going to get an apostille for the governor of New York. You're going to get an apostille from, for Governor Cuomo. And Governor Cuomo lives in New York. So when he brings this to your office, you've got to get it to Albany because Albany is the state capital. So it's where did it come from? Now, if Mayor Cuomo went to college in Pittsburgh and he's bringing you your document, then you're not going to get it done in Albany. You're going to get it done in Pittsburgh because it's where it originated. And you're going to get a lot of people that are going to come in and say, I went to school, but I'm 60 years old and I don't have to get anything. I, I don't California 60 years ago. Yes, you do. It's always the document where it originated. So I know I'm redundant. But where did it originate and where's it going? So see, I'm already making it simple for you. Where did it originate and where's it going? And then I thought maybe you would like to know a few examples of why people might need an apostille. So they're going to go to work in a country, in another country. They're going to get married in another country. They're going to adopt a child in another country. Maybe they're going to give their mom or dad a power of attorney in another country. Very popular to establish a branch of your business in another country. Background checks. That's just some of them. There are all kinds of things why people need to get their documents. So let me try to make this a little easy for you. If my uncle in Bulgaria died and he left me $20 million, which would be very nice, and I don't want to go to Bulgaria to get it. So I hire a lawyer in Bulgaria and I say, sell Uncle Chuck's properties and, and get rid of his bank accounts and just send me everything. Send me all the money. So now this lawyer is going to say, okay, but I need you to authenticate your birth certificate, your passport, the deed to Uncle Chuck's house, all kinds of things. And you will have to figure out where did these things come from? If they all come from one place, it makes your life a lot easier, but often they don't. Let's talk about destination weddings for a minute. So destination weddings, often they need to get their passports apostilled and a single status affidavit saying that they never been married or that they divorced or whatever. So the best thing as a business person is they call you and they say, I'm having a destination wedding, you know, and uh, I don't know, they're telling me I need these documents. And you say, no, stop right here. I know exactly what you need. You need a single status affidavit and you need your passport and sometimes your birth certificate. And they say, oh God, thank you so much because I'm so confused. And what did you do? You became the expert. They're not even going to ask you what it cost because they didn't know what to do. You become the expert and you're going to get that piece of business. So very interesting, all the different things that you'll be dealing with. So I want to one more time talk about the three words, country of destination. Country of destination, that's where it's going. Country of destination, if, if there's four different kids and they're born in four different states, they got to go to four different places to get apostilled. Documents that are apostilled in the state which they're originated, not the country of destination. That's where it's going. If you've 
gotten this much. Now you have an idea. Now I'm going to confuse you. I'm going to confuse you even more. Back in 1961, a bunch of countries joined a something called the Hague Convention. It's actually a treaty. Presently, I believe, the last time I did my homework or my research, there were 156 countries that belong to this Hague Convention, and there are 104 non-Hague countries. So what does that mean to you? Well, what it means to you is there are two different processes for Hague countries and non-Hague countries. Hague countries meaning there are countries where these things are going. So if they're going to China, they're going to get treated one way. If they're going to Israel, they're going to get treated another way. So let's talk for a minute about what's the difference. Well, remember I said legalization and I said, hold that word in your head. If you're going to do a document that is not a member of the Hague Convention, legalization, it changes, the, the word changes. It's not apostilled, it's legalized. And many people, we can call it all the same thing, but technically it is not. So your document that's a Hague country, that's easy. That just goes one stop. It's a one-stop shop. It goes up to the Secretary of State. They put their seal on it, their pretty ribbon, whatever they do, and they send it back to you, and you give it back to the client, and everybody's happy. A non-Hague country can be three steps, always two steps, maybe three steps. So the first thing is it's going to go up to the Secretary of State, just like the other one, and they're going to fix it up. And then the next thing is it's going to go to the Department of State for legalization. And once it gets through the Department of State for legalization, in many instances, your client will ask you if you can present the document to the proper embassy, because all the embassies are in DC. Now this sounds really complicated, but it's not. It's a Hague country or it's a non-Hague country. You, you know how to do a Hague country and you know how to do a non-Hague country. So now you're gonna ask me, yes, but I have to go to DC and I have to, and I have to find the Department of State and then I have to go back to DC and then I have to go to the embassy. No, there are companies that do this. There are companies that handle all this for you. So you send this company a document and a fee for taking it over to the Department of State. They pick it up a couple days later. They move on to the embassy and they know when the embassy is finished with it. They bring it back and then they, they bring it back to you. It's, so, it's very simple. And I want to tell you, yes, you pay them a fee, but it's the best fee you could pay. It is. It's the greatest because they know what they're doing. They're experts. And they are the company that I use, uh, which I will be, it's called US Authentications, and I think they're wonderful. And they'll answer any questions that you have, and they'll work with you. You know, no one understands all this in the beginning. When I think back to some of the questions I asked, boy, they must have thought I was really dumb. But I wasn't. I just didn't know. So don't be afraid to ask. Mentors are around. I'm happy to talk to you. And I caution you, and don't hang a sign out and start, and start doing some fancy advertising until you get the, the rhythm of this, because that's what it is. It's rhythm. And the last thing you want to do is advertise, put a sign up, have people coming. They're so excited. They're going to get their apostilles done. And then you don't yet know what to do with it. So work on it a little bit. Study it. In my school, I have a wonderful course, and you can learn a lot from that course and, and learn on the go. That's what I say, learn on the go. So hay countries and non-hay countries are listed on the internet. So when a person comes in, that's the first question, well, one of the first questions that you're going to ask them, what's the country of destination? And you're going to check, and you're going to see, is it a hay country or is it a non-hay country? Now. When it says non-Hague country, I always double check and Google it. And the reason why is because many countries join the Hague all the time. So the list may not be 
updated yet, and you may miss something. So when I see non-hate country on my list, I always check the internet. And sometimes they say, you know, they, they joined the Hague Convention 2018. So you want to be sure. And you want to give this person the right advice. You want to give them the right advice. You know, apostilles are not inexpensive. And sometimes the people that come to you don't understand English so well. And you want to work with them. And I have this little thing about business. And I'll share, be happy to share it with you. And that is, I tell people, Thank you for bringing me this document and I will be happy to do it. But I don't just want this document. I want every document you are ever going to have for the rest of your life. And when you tell people that, they automatically know you're around for the long haul. You're not going anywhere. So they make a relationship with you. Sometimes somebody comes in for a notary or calls you for a notary and you see that it's a diploma, and you see that it's a birth certificate, and you say to them, hey, are you trying to apostille this? And they say, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes you say to them, well, I can do that. And they say, here, go, you know. So again, try to give them the best advice you can and the most updated advice that you can give them. So here's a little quizzy thing so that you're going to see how you respond to this and how you understand it. A client calls from South Korea. His dad is selling several properties in South Korea. But his dad lives in the United States, in Philadelphia, and will need to sign several documents and have them notarized and apostled for use in South Korea. Can this be done? Now remember, dad lives in Philadelphia, in the United States, in Philadelphia, and is going to sign those documents and have them notarized with me in Philadelphia. So that is going to make them originating documents in Philadelphia and their destiny, their destination is South Korea. So it's easy, can that be done? Absolutely. Dad's gonna sign in the US where the document originated. So after you do this a little bit, you'll have it all in your head, where to go, where to come from, where's it going, how am I gonna get it there? Is it Hague or non-Hague? Those are the things you need to know. So apostilles are issued from the state the document originated. They must be signed and notarized in the U.S. We do not certify the content of the documents. They are strictly used abroad in a foreign country, and they're not going to be used within the United States. So when your phone rings and somebody says to you, I need an apostille for Texas, you're going to say no apostilles in Texas because apostilles are not used in the United States. So that's, that's a good thing for you. And as I said to you earlier, you don't have to be a notary, but it doesn't make sense not to be a notary because notaries, a good notary knows the laws of the state. Can you easily look at a document and see where it will require notarization? A good notary is probably going to be able to say that document doesn't look doesn't look right to me. It doesn't look like a deed. It just doesn't. It's not formatted right. And a good notary will be aware of the requirements of the Secretary of State and easily communicate with other secretaries of state. So I would say that yes, you should be a notary. Can you be an apostille agent in your own state? Absolutely. If you're a notary entrepreneur, this is a great way to diversify your business and add what could be a profitable income stream. Now, I didn't even know what an apostille was. I think I told you earlier. And it's 60% of my business. It was a good call to learn it and understand it. And financially, you know, you're going to be able to set prices that are somewhat higher than a notary. So we're going to get into that. Next, we're going to talk about how do you get started? Well, you know that I know the first thing you have to do is scope out the demographics of the business in your area and check out your competition. Is anybody else offering these services? I was cheap when I started, real cheap. And I didn't know what I was doing that well. I'll tell you how I raised my prices the first time. 
I raised my prices the first time when this wonderful man, whose name I don't remember, I just remember he was very good looking. And he picked up his apostilles, was about 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. And he said, wow, he said, your service is really good. I don't think you charge enough. And when he walked out the door, I raised my prices. So sometimes you got to get a little confidence. You know, you got to get a little confidence building. But you also have to consider your budget. Can you advertise? Can you get SEO on your computer so that when people Google Apostille near me, you know, they're going to find you. And most importantly, how are you going to get these documents to the Secretary of State? How far are you? Now, I know people in the business that live two minutes from the Secretary of State, so they just get in their car and run it over. But you take a person like me, I'm three hours away, three and a half hours away. I had to find my way. I had to find a messenger. And so that is something that's very, very important. And if you're six hours away or seven hours away, you can still do it because you can use an overnight courier service, but you can't promise them that you'll have it one, two, three. So again, check out your competition. Very important to know who's doing what in your area. So I'm going to say to you something that probably has occurred to you. And that is, why would anybody want to start an apostille business when they can do it themselves? And let me tell you, let me, let me make one thing clear. They can do it themselves. The internet tells them how to do it. The internet shows them the form. The internet tells them the fee. And they can do it themselves. But here's the deal. Most of them don't want to. Most of them, businessman or woman, a doctor or a lawyer, they do not want to be bothered with this. They do not want to be bothered with, you know, forms and stuff like that. They're happy that you do it and tell them it'll be back on Friday and deliver it to them or have them pick it up. Yes, you will get some young people, especially, who say, oh, well, I can drive and I can take a day off from school. I can drive up. And you know what? A lot of times they come back later and they say, oh, my God, I got stuck up there the whole day. I didn't get home till 11 o'clock at night. And next time I'm going to listen to you. So sometimes you just have to let people do what they want to do. And if they realize, they'll come back to you anyway. But I tell them, Add up the train cost or the gasoline cost, and you have to take a day off from work and all these things. I tell them in a nice way, you know, if you let us do it, we'll have all the headaches. I think that I got a lot of business like that from, from being totally honest. And sometimes I just know I'm not going to talk them into it. They've made up their minds to go to Harrisburg, and I say, that's great, and good luck. So if you're three minutes away from the Secretary of State, you could save money and do it yourself. But if you're not, there's two things. Reliability is, I can't tell you how important that is. Reliability is so important because you've promised your customer something. And that person who's doing your driving is the way your customer is going to get it. You can't have somebody who's going to say, well... Tuesday, you know, I just woke up and I didn't feel like driving, but maybe I'll drive on Wednesday. No, no. You, you've got to, yeah, and the way to do it is give them some skin in the game. Make sure they know that they're going to get compensated for driving these things up there and making you money. Financially, you have to take into consideration all these things. Filing fees, messenger fees, notary fees, and yes, a profit for you. Because why would you be doing this if you didn't want to make some money? The filing fees are on the internet. Sometimes they're on the form. The messenger fees, your person's going to set for you. Notary fees, you have notary fees of what you charge people for notaries. Add that all up. Add profit in for yourself. And I'm going to talk about pricing now. And I'm going to tell you something really interesting. You'll find this really interesting. If you go on the internet, for the most part, you will never see a price list. And you'll never see a price list because, in all honesty, half the time, the jobs are different. So you get this person that comes in on Monday, Monday morning, and this person says, I need this tomorrow night. I have to have it, you know, and I'll pay for it, but I have to have it. Well, if they're going to pay for that, 
then you're going to charge them one thing. Now the next person comes in same day, Monday, and says, you know what? I'm leaving this afternoon. I'm going on a business trip. I won't be back for two weeks. So take your time. Don't rush. Well, you, you don't have to charge them that, that expedited fee. You'll see teasers on the, on the internet. But, you know, if you put a fee on there, you have to live with it. And I think most people have gotten uh, burned by that and don't do it. So the next thing I want to tell you is every state in the United States, except for one, which I cannot right now recall which one it is, has an apostille ordering form. So let's say I wanted to do an apostille in Ohio. All I do is Google apostille ordering form for Ohio, and, and I, it comes right up. And they had all the information that where to send it, how much it is. A lot of times they have like ex expedited fees and non-expedited fees and walk-in fees. Uh, it's, some of them are really good. You want to use their forms because they will reject your job if you do not. So trust me when I tell you, when I started and I didn't know, so, you know, I, I don't have a problem saying this. I did cover letters because that's the way I grew up in a law firm. And I said, you know, I, I'm in closing and, and yada, yada, yada. And they sent them back because that's not what they want. They want their order form. So um, I'm happy to share this link with anyone who wants it. And, and you want to make sure that you send that order form. And if you have any questions about it, usually there's a phone number on there and you can call them. So I want to talk about state guidelines for a minute because you have no idea how important that is to this business. Every state does it different. Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Harrisburg does not accept Federal Express. They only accept UPS. So if I were to send them a Federal Express, it would probably take them a month and a year to, get, to, to ever get it back to me. You got to check these things very carefully because some of them, they'll throw it in a bin and you'll never see it again. And you don't want to do that. So you want to check. And I would focus on my own state first. I would learn about my own state first. What do they accept? What time do they open? What time do they close? Do they accept orders online? A lot of them now are doing things online. What kind of expedited service do they offer? What type of overnight carrier do they accept? I would focus first on my own state. Once you get that right and you start to build your business a little bit, then you will definitely, absolutely be able to branch out into some other states. So I wanted to show you a couple of documents. Here's an apostille of a diploma. So I, I want to bring to your attention something that I said before. The customer lives in Pennsylvania and has for years, but went to college in California. So this has to go to California, to Sacramento, which is the capital of California. There are no exceptions to that rule, although your client will try to tell you that there are, but they're not. Birth certificate. What's different about a birth certificate is it's a federal document and you never notarize a federal document. Never. That's a no, no. So if you have a customer who lives in Pennsylvania, but their kids were born in Michigan and Louisiana, you're then going to get those documents apostilled in Michigan and Louisiana. If the birth certificate is not an original, and this is so important, you need to suggest to your client that they order the birth certificate through something called Vital Check. It's a nationwide service, very user-friendly, but you can't do it. They have to do it because they do ask a lot of personal information. Like they ask their mother's maiden name, their father's maiden name. They ask a lot of personal stuff. I always tell the client, I'll be happy to sit here with you and help you, but I, I want you to do it. And that's a good policy. And last, I want to talk about a marriage license and a divorce decree. How about putting them together, right? They're easy, but they have one thing in common. No one will apostille a copy. So I can't speak for every state, but I can speak for Pennsylvania. If they have a copy of their marriage license or a copy of their divorce decree, 
they have to go to the courthouse of the county in which they were married and get what we call an exemplified copy. The court clerk looks it up, puts a stamp on it, there's a cost involved, and once they bring me the exemplified copy, that's what I can get off a steeled. And an exemplified copy, I believe that every state has the same thing, but they might call it something different. So that is basically some, but not all, of, of, of this wonderful business. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you... I hope that you got something valuable out of it. And if you have questions, and I'd love to answer them, if you want to email me, you can email me at centercitynotary100 at gmail.com. Always available to talk. Once again, I know I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. The National Notary Association is a stellar and wonderful organization. The people that you'll meet at the NNA are the same. I uh, co-authored a book with a gentleman who I met through my association with the NNA. So if you can, if it fits into your life and fits into your budget, I would really recommend a membership in the NNA. I want to thank you for listening to me. and hope that you really got something good out of today. So thanks and have a great day. 